What's up everybody, this is Teacher Ivan from Next Gen Academy. Our goal in this channel is to help you achieve your highest potential and to help you understand subjects in the easiest and the most efficient way. If you'd like to get more tips and tricks on how to achieve A star in your IGCSE, don't forget to like, comment, share and subscribe to this channel. Lastly, if you need any help in your studies, you can always head on to our website, link in the below or our Instagram, drop us a DM and we'll be able to help you. Enjoy this video and I wish you all the best. All right, okay, today we will be going through this paper, February, March, 2024, uh, paper 4-2. Okay, just wanna say hello to all my next gen family. Okay, if my mic suddenly gets a bit softer, please let me know, okay? Uh, quickly just type in the chat or notify me uh, because recently the mic has been giving some problems, I think the, the connection. Okay, this is a 130 marks paper. We will go to question one. A grocer sells potatoes, mushroom, and carrots. A customer buys three kg of mushrooms at 1.04 per kg and 4 kg of carrots at 1.28 per kg. Calculate the total cost. Okay, total cost is not easy, right? So you just take 3 times 1.04 plus 4 times 1.28. Okay, you get $8.24. Okay, next one. In one week, the ratio of the masses of vegetables sold by the grocer is Potato, mushroom, carrots, 11, 8, 6. Work out the mass of mushrooms sold as the percentage of the total mass. A mass of mushrooms sold as percentage of total mass. So we got potato, mushroom, carrots, 11, 8, 6. Okay, total you got how many? You add it all up together, you get 25. Okay, mushroom, the ratio of the mushroom is 8 over 25. Since they want it in percentage, you multiply by 100%. Okay, just calculate this, you get 32%. Okay, next one. Number two, the total mass of potatoes, mushroom, carrots is 1,500 kg. Find the mass of carrots the grocer sells this week. Okay, so carrots, looking back into here, carrot is six parts. So six out of 25, you multiply by 1,000. 500 kg. Okay, have this in the calculator, you'll get 360 kg. Next time. The profit the grocer makes selling 1 kg of carrots is 75 cents. Find the total profit the grocer makes selling carrots this week. Okay, so 1 kg of carrot, he earns 75 cents. He sold 360 kg. So you just need to take 360 multiplying 75 cents. Calculate this, you'll get $270. Question 4. On the last day of the week, the grocer reduces the price of 1 kg of potatoes by 8% to $1.15. Calculate the original price of 1 kg of potatoes. Okay, so this is a reverse percentage. Remember, ORI value is always equal to 100%. Okay, what is the current percentage right now? $1.15 is already dropped by, reduced by 8%. So the current percentage is 92%. Very good. Okay, so I like to do the yeah, I like to do the ratio method. Huh? So I want to find what is my 100 percent Now drop 8%, which is 92% is $1.15. Okay, we go and solve this one. Change it ratio to fraction. So x is equal to 100 over 92 multiplied by 150. Okay, you will get here. Uh, we want it in dollars and cents, so 100 over 92 times 1.15, we'll get 1.25. Question D, the grocer buys 620 kg of onion, correct to the nearest 20 kg. Okay, you see the word correct to means, this is the upper bound, lower bound type of question already. He packs them into bags, each containing 5 kg of onions, correct to one nearest 1 kg. Okay, so this is one bag each. Calculate the upper bound of number of bags of onions that he packs. Okay, what do we need to find? What is the formula of this first? So you look at the overall first. How can I find numbers of bags of onions? What's the formula here? Number of bags is equal to the mass. Okay, mass over bag, right? Okay, or mass over each bag. Okay, 
met over each bank. Okay, so now they want us to find the upper bound of this. So we need to find what's the combination. Upper bound, something divided by something. What is the combination? How can I get my biggest possible value? Big over big, small over small, big over small, or small over big. Okay, big over small. Very good, Chloe. Okay, so here, big over small. Got it? Okay, so here it's upper bound. Uh, sorry, I should raise upper bound, lower bound. Okay, upper bound over lower bound. So let's find what is the mass upper bound first. Okay, mass upper bound. The first value. So 620 kg. Upper bound means you plus, then they take correct to the nearest. You take 20 divided by 2. So you get 630 kg. Okay, each bag, they say each bag is 5 kg, right? So uh, I just write here each bag, okay? Because I already wrote this one. LB, okay, what is the lower bound for this? 5 kg minus 1 over 2. So here, 4.5 kg. So I want to find number of bags up above. Okay, I follow the first pink color formula that I, I did. So 630 divided by 4.5. You'll get 140 bags. Okay, question one. Okay, why did I divide 20 divided by 2? It's a formula. It's a formula. So you, you need to remember when whenever whatever units they give you here, you either plus or minus that unit here over 2. That is, okay, if we write 140 back, huh? can I that one? But just write 140 enough, Raja. Okay, Nila, do you understand? Whenever we do upper bound, lower bound, they say correct to whatever you need here, you plus or minus this divided by 2. It's just purely the formula. Hmm. Okay, if you are okay, type 1. If you have any question, please type all your questions down. If you have any question for question 1. So I want you all to observe the pattern for paper 4. You look, question 1, right? Normally, it's this type of question. Right? Either numbers, uh, percentage, yeah, ratio, dollars, money, right? Uh, the chapter 1 in your entire syllabus. Okay, let's go to chapter uh, question 2. Yeah, yeah, correct. One, one, one question, many, many sub-questions. Okay, number two. A, B, C, and D are points on the circle. A, D, X, and B, C, X are straight line. Angle B, A, D is equals to X degrees, and angle D, C, X is equals to Y degrees. Explain why X is equals to Y. Give a geometrical reason for each statement you make. Okay, why is this equals to this? So we need to look at the overall picture. Look, there's a circle here, so most likely we have to use circle theorem. Okay, so we say cyclic quadrilateral. So have 290 degrees. Okay. Are you sure 290 degrees? Think what, what is cyclic quadrilateral? It's not 290 degrees. Both add up will be equals to 180 degrees. Ah, okay, so it doesn't have to be 90 degrees. So this plus this will be 180. These two add up together will be equals to 180. Okay, but let's just focus on this part here. Okay, we let's let's find this angle here first. B C D. Okay, what can we say about angle B C D? Okay, we can say that B X is a straight line. Okay, straight line. Your angle is what? One eighty, right? So angle B C D, I can say is hundred eighty minus y. Okay, hundred eighty minus y. So this is one eight zero minus y. Then we can say that this all here A B C D is equals to a cyclic quadrilateral. Okay, we need to mention this word. Huh? And remember, don't, don't write one whole long story. Yeah, just write, okay? just write the, the keywords enough already. So what we can say is that this angle plus this angle will be equal to 180 degrees. Okay, so I can say angle BAD plus angle BCD equals to 180 degrees. Okay, I sum in the value. X plus 180 minus Y is equals to 180 degrees. Okay, let's call for this. X equals to 180 minus 180 plus Y. Therefore, X is equal to Y. Yeah, this is the reason. Okay, so I think keyword that you need to write, probably this over here first, 180 minus Y. Then after that, uh, you need to write a cyclic polylateral also. Okay, the next one. 
um, show that triangle ABX is similar. A keyword here is similar to triangle CDX. Okay, when we try to prove that it's similar, it's either you use angle or you use the leg. Okay, but you look into your diagram here. <clears throat> do, we, do we have any information about the leg? Totally zero, right? Okay, so can we use angle? Okay, let's, let's see. Uh, they say they want us to prove this triangle is equals to or similar to this triangle. Okay, let's see. We know that X and Y, they are equal to each other. Okay, so let me just highlight this first. X and Y. Okay, what else? What else can we say that is the is the same? X equals to Y and both have 90 degrees. No, no, no. We do this this one we got 90 degrees. There's no 90 degrees here at all. Okay, what else? What else do we know? We don't know. Yeah, this one we don't know is whether it's 90 degrees or so. Or not. It looks like, but it's probably not. Okay, another thing we can say is that. This angle and this angle, they are the same also. Okay, so here, this part here, okay, you can say this and this, they are the same. Okay, I need to tr prove three, uh, three of it. Then if you look at here, both of them, actually, this is the common angle, right? Uh, so this one is the, the common one. So this is how we are, we are going to write down, okay, we're going to write down the, the statement. Angle. BAX, okay, which is the yellow color one that I highlighted. Angle BAX is equals to angle BCX. Okay, next one. Angle ABX is equals to angle CDX. Okay, then we prove one more angle, that, that red color one. Angle AXB is the common angle. Okay, so you want to prove that all the angles, they are the same because we don't have any sites that information that's given to us. Okay, then we can actually, you write these three statements, you get the full marks ready. We can just write it one more time. Therefore, triangle ABX is similar to triangle CDX. Okay, this is all this uh, statement here. I will just highlight. Okay, this one. Oops. Okay, the blue one is this statement, red one is this statement, and yellow one is this statement. All angles add up to 180 degrees in triangle. Um, no, no, that one is a known fact already. Okay, let's go to the next one. Okay, AD equals to 15, DX equals to 9, CX equals to 12. Find what is DC. Okay, let's look at the, the diagram here. Okay, let's label down what they give us first. They say here is 15, 9, 12, right? Okay, did they give any other things? 15, 9, and 12. All right, now we have to see. Okay, you don't try not to solve it straight away like this because it's very hard for you to see. So what we can do, you sketch it out. Okay, sketch out the two triangles that are similar to each other. So it's this and this big one, right? Okay, so let's just... Sketch it out. Okay, I, I don't know whether it is 90 degrees huh, because they never they actually never mentioned that it's 90 degrees. But let's just we can draw it as like a 90 degrees huh, because when we do similarity, the, the angle doesn't matter. Okay, so I want you all to draw out this triangle first. This here. So this is A B X. Okay, what do we have here? A X is equal to 24. Okay, 15 plus 9, 24. Then on your B X, there is B C X. Okay, B C X. BCX, we know what is CX. CX is equals to 12. Okay, I don't know what is this BC. Okay, let's call this A. I want to find this A later on. The other triangle, okay, the other triangle looks like this. Okay, B, C, X. Okay, what information we have? We have here, this is 9. This one is 12. Okay, so sketch it out now. Huh? So that y'all can see clearly. For me, I look at here also, my, my eyes are so very hard for me to, to, to see. Okay, everyone got it? You have to be careful. This one, one is A, one is 9. All right, now we can do, we take this and this compare. Okay, this side and this side, we compare. Then this side, okay, this side here, and this side here, we compare. Okay, we put into the similarity. Formula. Okay, so what I'll do is like this. 
uh, AX over CX, I put the big one over the small one, equals to BX over BX. Okay, AX, what's AX? AX is 24 over 12. BX, okay, BX, I got 12 plus A, so 12 plus A over BX is 9. Okay, as long as you can write down this formula, then it should be correct already. I put the big length. This is the blue color part. This is the yellow color part. Okay, let's cross multiply this. Like this. So 24 times 9 equals to 12 times 12 plus 8. So here we get 216 equals to 144 plus 12a. Solve this. Bring the 144 to the left hand side. 72 equals to 12a. A is equals to 6. Okay, this is for question. This, this question here. Okay, number two. Complete the statement. The ratio of area of triangle ABX to area of triangle CDX is equals to what to what? Okay, what to what? So one is, they give you the length, they want you to change it to area. So we actually need to find the K value. What is the, okay, the, the enlargement or what's the constant? Uh? So what I can do is, you take ABX over CDX, okay, but we only got the length. Right, we only got the length. We can compare length AX. Okay, you all look, look over here. I take length of the big one divided by length of the small one, okay, which is CX. 24 over 12. So the K value is actually equal to 2 if okay, for ABX to CDX. But since they want us to compare area, area will be K squared. So it's 2 squared. 4 means 4 to 1. Okay, 4 means we can write it as 4 over 1 as well. So answer is. 4 to 1. Okay, the second theorem one, I think that was where your get started. Right? Why only one mark? Plus 24 over 12 square. <laughs> 24 over 12 square. Okay, if you're okay, type 2 for this question 2. If no question, any question, please write it down. All right, let's go to question three. Table shows info about marks gained by each of 10 students in the test. Calculate the range. Okay, so range is you take the biggest x value, which is your mark, minus the smaller one. Five. Calculate the mean. Mean is sum of fx over sum of f. fx, 15 times 4 plus 16 times 1, 17 times 2, plus 18 times 1, plus 19 times 0, plus 20 times 2, over, okay, they already take got 10 students, so we just write over 10. You'll get here 168 over 10, which is 1.68. Question 3, okay, median. What do you get for your answer for median here? I think this is a tricky, tricky, tricky question. Hey, 16.8. Sorry, uh, I read wrong already. Thanks, Richard. 16.8. Okay, what is median? What is median over here? Okay, anyone got the answer? 16. Okay, anyone else got the answer? 16. 16.5. 16. 16.5, okay. 16 or 16.5 is the answer. So remember what is the, the formula that I taught you all? First step, we have to find what is the position first. Yeah, okay. You find your position, which is n plus 1 divided by 2. So I have 10 students, I plus 1 divided by 2, I'll get 5.5. That means I want to find the fifth and sixth value. Okay, uh, the, the fifth and sixth position, the, the value. So you look over here, this is a deal for. Your fifth value is here, right? Then your sixth and seventh value is here. Make sense? Okay, so how to do this also? This one, four, five. You can do this one, is your cumulative frequency. Okay, so fifth value is 16, seventh, 
uh, the six value is at 17, the six and seven value. So I will take 16 plus 17 divided by two, which is 16.5. Okay, four, mode. Mode means highest frequency. The one highest frequency is 15 marks. Question B, Carlos mean mark for seven homework tasks is 17. After completing the eight tasks, his mean mark is 17.5. Calculate Paolo's mark for the eight parts. Okay, so we are going to find the total marks first for the seven parts. So I'll let x equals to the total, okay, total marks. So x over seven is equals to 17. x equals to 17 times seven, which is equals to 119. Okay, my second part, now after you complete the eight parts, okay, let's call the eight parts y. Okay, y is the eight parts. So 119, plus y divided by 8 equals to 17.5. Let's solve for this. 119 plus y equals to 140. y is equals to 21. Okay, let's go to question C. The table shows percentage score by each of 100 students in their final exam. Okay, let's see here first what they want to draw. Draw a histogram. Okay, so histogram, when we see the word histogram, what's the formula that we write down? FD equals to F over CW. Okay, you've got to memorize this one. FD, so your frequency density is equal to frequency over class width. Okay, let's calculate what is our FD here. FD is... 12 divided by 30, this one is 0 0.4, 18 over 20, which is equal to 0 0.9, 35 over 10, 3.5, 20 divided by 10, 2, 15 divided by 30, which is equal to 0 0.5. Okay, class width, how to find class width? This minus this, okay, this minus this, this minus this. So frequency is this, over class week. Okay, let's plot it out on the graph. 0 to 30 is 0 0.4. Then 30 to 50, 0 0.9. 50 to 60, 3.5. Okay, then um, 60 to 70, 2. Then the final one. 0 0.5 for 70 to 100. Okay, join it. In the exam, please use pencil for this part here. All right, question three. If you are okay with three, please type three. Okay, let's move on to question four. Okay, that's how a few of you have questions on this, right? Diagram shows a pyramid with a square base B, C, D, E. Diagonal C, E, and B, D intersect at M. And the vertex F is directly above M. D, E is 12 cm and F, M is 9 cm. Calculate the volume of the pyramid. Okay, they even give you the, the formula. They say volume V of a pyramid with base area A and height is V equals to 1 over 3 A, H. Okay, let's find what is the A first. A is your base area. So you take 12 times 12, which is equal to 144. So volume equals to 1 over 3 times 144 times 9. Okay, you get here 432. Okay, so some of you have issues this one, right? Okay, how do you find the total surface area of the pyramid? So think of it, total surface area, you need to find base. Okay, number one is your base, which you already got. Then you have four pieces of this same triangle here. Okay, problem. Do I have enough information for the triangle over here? Got it. Not enough, right? Okay, I have the base. I don't have anything else. Okay, so what do I need to find? Normally for 3D shapes, okay, this is under your topic of mensuration. Use nine. Okay, what else, what else do you need to use? Okay, you can use half times base times height. Use 9, use 6. So you do it like this. You draw an extra right angle triangle like this. I'll just I'll use this, this triangle at the side here. 
So I am going to draw a, a right angle triangle like this. This right angle triangle is 9 and 6 at the bottom. Okay, 9 and 6. Okay, I, I draw it out here so it's clearer for us to see. M, X, F. Okay, 9, 6. Okay, can I find Fx? Yeah, again, okay, using Pythagoras, right? Okay, Pythagoras says that Fx squared is equal to 6 squared plus 9 squared, okay, which is equal to 117. Fx is, you type in the calculator, you square root 117, you get 3 third 13. Okay, so now you see I have the middle part. You have to remember when we do triangle, area of triangle, when you want to use half times base times height, we have to use the perpendicular height. Okay, so now I just take one of the surface area. Okay, I, let's draw out this one. Huh? So BCF. How does BCF look like? Okay, I just calculated F, B, C. Okay, I, the X huh, was the middle here. Okay, middle part here. So here is 3, 13, which we calculated just now, and the base was 12. Okay, can I find the area of this? Area we just use half times base times height. So half times 12 times 3 13. Okay, your area of one of the triangle is 18 13. Okay, therefore, total area will be 4 triangles plus 1 square. Okay, so you take 4 times 18 13 plus one four four. Okay, in the previous question, we did 12 times 12. Calculate this, you get 403.6 cm squared. Okay, you got to write 404 also, okay. Because 3 as that. Okay, good. Okay, next one. Question B. The diagonal shows a point made from cone and hemisphere. The base radius of the cone and the radius of the hemisphere are both RCM. Slant height of the cone is 3 RCM. The total surface area of the toy is 304 cm square. Calculate the value of R. Okay, calculate the value of R. So what do you need over here? You need to use these two formulas. Pi R, L. Okay, this is L. Uh. L is your slant height. Okay, this is L. Then... Your R is over here. So all you need to do is add both of these up together. Pi R L plus 4 pi R squared equals to this. Because this is the outside, okay, your top and the bottom part. Okay, let's break it down. The cone, okay, let's find the area of the cone first. The surface area of cone. They gave us the formula pi R L. L is 3 R. So 3 pi R squared. Area of the hemisphere. Okay, this is half a sphere, right? So you will take half times 4 pi r squared. Okay, half times 4 pi r squared. So this will become 2 pi r squared. Okay, your total area, you'll get 3 pi r squared plus 2 pi r squared, which is 5 pi r squared. And 5 pi r squared, they give us is 304. Okay, can I find R? R is 304 divided by 5 pi. Then you square root. They square root this value. Okay, this, you get 4.3992, which I think you can round it up to 4.40. Okay, try to keep it to three significant figures. Very good. good. Can you just type a 4 for oh, question 4? And go to A. Okay, later I, later I send I send you the, the paper later. Okay, question five. Let's go to question five. Okay, this one algebra. Factorize x squared minus x minus 12. Anyone still don't know how to factorize? Okay, if you don't know how to factorize, use your calculator. Okay, go to your calculator, press menu, go to A, equation slash fun, go to polynomial, then select degree two. Press 1, minus 1, minus 12. Okay, you can work backwards. Huh? So you see here, they give you x equals to 4. Okay, this one you 
You can write it like this first, x equals to 4 and x equals to negative 3. Okay, anyone don't know how to use calculator to get this value? It means you don't know how to type this in the calculator and get the answer. Everyone okay, right? Okay, so in the case that if you really don't know how to do, just use the calculator. All of you here have the privilege of using calculator, so just use calculator, just be smart about it. Then you move the 4 and minus 3 to the left hand side. So here will become x minus 4 equals to 0, x plus 3 equals to 0. So you just put like that, x minus 4, x plus 3. Okay, but you erase this part here. Don't leave it there. x plus 4, x minus 4, x plus 3. Okay, next one. x squared minus 16, okay, we need to know that you can do a squared minus b squared. So here is x plus 4, x minus 4. X squared minus x minus 12 is the above one. So x minus 4, x plus 3. Both the x minus 4 can answer off. So you'll be left with x plus 4 over x plus 3. Okay, next one. Simplify this. We open up the bracket first. So we can use a square minus 2ab plus b square. So 4x square minus 12x plus 9 minus bracket x square plus 2x plus 1 equals to 4x square minus 12x plus 9 minus x square minus 2x minus 1. Okay, gather up all the same terms together, you get 3x square minus 14x plus 8. Okay, this and this, this and this, and then the one last value. Okay, final one. Write as a single fraction in its simplest form. Oh, okay, another thing, uh, because you all are doing math, right? Please don't forget to write down your answer here. Okay, they give you the face. Please check, check, check. Don't leave it empty. Yes, get your get. Lose your marks because of never write the final answer here. Write as a single fraction in its simplest form. Okay, so first thing, I want to join both the denominator together. And for me to join the denominator, here I multiply by x minus 3 over x minus 3. Here I multiply by x plus 1, x plus 1. Okay, another thing is that the denominator part, if it's in the factorized form, you don't need to go and open it. Okay, you just leave it like it. But if you open it, so it's fine. It's just don't, don't need to do extra step. Lah, okay, so here we are write uh, 2x plus 4 times x minus 3 minus x times x plus 1 over x plus 1 x minus 3. Okay, so the bottom part, you don't care already. This is a simplified form. Now you just open up the bracket. 2x squared minus 6x plus 4x minus 12 minus x squared minus x over x plus 1 x minus 3. Okay, find all the similar terms, the like terms. So you got these two, then these three for x. So you get x squared minus 3x minus 12 over x plus 1 x minus 3. Next one. Expand and simplify. Three brackets. Okay, let's open up the first two brackets first. You want to open the second two bracket, you want to open the first and third, also doesn't matter. Okay, all same thing. Right? X squared minus 5x minus 3x plus 15, 2x plus 1. Okay, when we do three brackets, uh, this is my preference that I like to do. I will, after I open up two of the brackets, I'll put the one with the two terms in front first. Yeah, and I'll explain the all way. So here, 2x plus 1. I just switch the position, uh, then I also simplify it, x squared minus 8, x plus 15. Okay, instead of me cross multiplying immediately and open up the, expand the brackets immediately, what I like to do is I write it like that first. 2x, then I write the second bracket, then I write the second term, then write the second bracket again. Okay, like this. First term, second bracket, second term, multiply second bracket. This step is not necessary, but I like to write it because at least I can check back. Uh, not so not so messy for me also the writing. Okay, so you can follow, you can follow this trick also. Now you open up the bracket 2x cubed minus 16x squared plus 30x plus x squared minus 8x plus 15 equals to 2x cubed minus 15x squared plus 22x plus 15. Okay, another trick that I can teach you all, you all see here, right? Got a lot of terms uh, in your exam. You all cannot highlight like me right just now. 
So what I like to do is the like terms, you put you put some sort of system that you can you can uh, group together. So like you see, x square, okay, maybe x square because it's square, right? I will put two lines like that at the bottom. You just use pencil, pencil to write. Then x, this side and this side. So I know that these two I need to add up together. So you see minus 16 plus 1. Then 30 minus 8. Okay. Otherwise, you lose one term, right? Like you 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 write one term wrong, it will affect your entire answer already. Yeah, I used to do this a lot during my high school and college days because when you're in college, uh, you all will see like maybe 10 different terms. So how do you group it? You don't have highlighted also. Okay, your exam, you only got your pen. Suffer, uh, no lah. So you create systems. All right, let's go to question E. Okay, question E is pretty interesting for a simultaneous equation. Six mark question. Okay, you see got x squared here. Okay, so you can either remove the y or you can do substitution to find your x. Okay, either one of it also works. In this case, you can do both substitution and elimination. Okay, but let's do substitution because I think most of you here are familiar with that. Okay, we use equation one. We make x as the subject first. x equals to 13 plus 3y. I call this equation 3. I'm now going to substitute equation 3 into equation 2. 2, 13 plus 3y squared minus 9y equals to 116. Okay, open up the bracket. 2 times 169 plus 78y plus 9y squared minus 9y equals to 116. Okay, is it way bigger, the value here? Okay, you want to find x first also actually can. Yeah, so up to, up to y'all. Uh. So open up the, the bracket. So here you get 338 plus 156y plus 18y squared minus 9y equals to 116. Okay, bring everything to the left-hand side and arrange it to a quadratic equation. 18y squared plus 147y plus 222 equals to 0. Okay, I don't want it to be so big. I divide everything by 3. Okay, so I will get here 6y squared plus 49y plus 74 equals to 0. Okay, for me, over here, I I myself also, I will just use calculator to, to go and check for the answer. Okay, all good. Now I use calculator. So take out your calculator. Type in the equation first. So we work backwards. Okay, you type into your calculator 649.74, you will get negative 2 and negative 37 over 6. If you see it in a decimal place, change it to fraction first. Okay, so you use your calculator setting, change it to fraction first. So I will work backwards. Huh? will be like this. Y is equal to negative 37 over 6. This one is y equals to negative 2. Here you get 6y plus 37 equals to 0. y plus 2 equals to 0. Okay, you need to show this full working. You cannot straight away write down the answer. Okay, you cannot straight away write down the answer. So you need to show all of this here. So I got my x, uh, I got my two y's. Now I can find what is my x. So I'm going to substitute y into 3. Okay, substitute back into here. So x is equal to 13 plus 3 times 37 over 6. x is equal to negative 11 over 2. If you write it in decimal place, it's totally fine as well. This one you get 13 plus 3 times negative 2. x is equal to 7. Okay, make sure you also put it in the correct S. Don't double it, okay? don't, don't inverse both of it. x will be negative 11 over 2, negative 37 over 6. This one will be 7. Negative 2. This is the substitution method. However, if you use the elimination method, also it's fine. How do elimination? You need to multiply the equation 1 by 3 first. Okay, you all can go and try that one. Can, can. You put in decimal, also can. Um, okay, wait. But the, can I show how to do the first one calculator? What do you mean, first one? The factorizing. This one here? A, A, L, 
Oh, A1. Uh. You do you know how to type it in the calculator? The, the equation? You go to E. No, 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 not using alpha. You, which, which calculator are you using? All the, the, it's a typical factorizing. You are just using calculator to factorize it. Not alpha. 570 EX. Okay, just in case for any of you who don't understand how to factorize, this part here also is the same thing. Okay, I, I'll explain using this part here. You press menu. Okay, press menu then. You press, press right down, down. You go to A. Equation slash bump. Then press polynomial. This one, remember this one? Degree two. You do like the normal, technically you are solving the quadratic equation. Okay, you are solving the quadratic equation, but then they ask you to factorize again, so you don't go write the answer. You get the answer first, then you work backwards. Then you only show the factorized form. So this is the cheating way, okay? In the way, the, the cheating way, but you cheat, also you cheat properly. Okay, you cheat in the way that they, they want you to whatever presentation they want you to write down, you write down. Okay, any more question or question five? If you got it for five, have five in the chat. Okay, no issues, huh? Okay, just ask all your questions, huh? please ask before exam. I'm here to, to help you out. Okay, let's go to question six. The diagram shows triangle ABC with AB equals to 17.2. ABC is 54 degrees and ACB is 68 degrees. Calculate AC. Where is AC? AC over here. This is a triangle, so we can think about Three formulas. Sine rule, cos rule. Okay, sine rule, cos rule. This is non-right angle triangle. Uh, so we, we can write this few formula. Non-right angle triangle. Sine rule, cos rule, and 1 over 2 AB sine C. Is it possible to split AMC into right angle triangle? Then to find AC? No. Cannot. Because... We don't have enough information. This is not in the middle. They didn't say it is in the middle. Okay? Ah. Okay, so how, how can I find AC? How can I find AC? We got this and this. Okay, so I'm going to use sine rule AC over sine 54 is equal to 17.2 over sine 68. AC is equal to 70.2 over sine 68 multiply sine 24 degrees. You get here 15.0. Okay, question B. M lies on BC and MC equals to 12.8. Okay, we got this now first, 15. Calculate AM. Okay, where is AM? So AM, if you look here, we have crocodile mouth. Crocodile mouth means cost rule. Yeah, yeah, let's use cost rule. So cost rule formula is a square plus b square equals to eh, a square equals to b square plus c square minus 2bc cos a. b square plus c square minus 2bc cos a. Okay, a will be the opposite side. So am square equals to 12.8 square plus 15 square minus 2 times 12.8. Minus 15 cos 68 degrees. Okay, you get here 244.991. Okay, AM. Here is 244.991. Square root 8, you get 15.7. Okay, then the next item. Calculate the shortest distance from A to BC. What is the shortest distance from a point to a line? Will be a perpendicular distance. Okay, so this is the line that you want to find. Okay, let's find this one. Uh, let's call this uh, AXC. I draw it off first. AXC. Okay, I have here 15, here 68 degrees. So I want to find, I use Sokatoa. This is my opposite. This is my hypotenuse. So sine 
68 degrees equals to AX over 15. AX equals to 15 sine 68 degrees, which is equal to 13.9. Okay, all good. Question six. Okay, question six. Easy, right? Okay, sorry. Don't say keep saying easy. If you don't sign, do cause through. Just apply it lah. Okay, all good. For question six, just type six in the chat. All right. Okay, if all good, we are gonna just stop here first, and we'll continue in the next session. All right. So we are gonna go through the second part of this paper. This is zero five eight zero four two FM twenty. 24. Okay, let's go to question seven over here. P8 negative five, Q negative four five. Okay, this is called a column vector. Find three Q. Three Q, you just need to multiply three to Q. Okay, three negative four five. So you multiply both top and bottom. And you get here negative 12, 15. Okay, I don't know why some students are, uh, when you're right, uh, you're write it as a fraction. Don't put the extra line uh, in the middle. Again, just literally write negative 12, 15 like this. Okay, find P minus Q. P is 8, negative 5, minus Q. Okay, this one, be careful with the symbol. If not clear on it, you all can always just open up the, the bracket. So 8 minus minus 4, you'll get 8 plus 4, which is 12. Minus 5, minus 5, you get minus 10. Then find modulus P minus Q, okay? What is this modulus? Modulus is your magnitude. Okay, magnitude is square root X square plus Y square. Okay, someone was asking in the group, right? Okay, the, the formula. So square root X square plus Y square. We already got the X and the Y. So you just substitute into the formula here, 12 square plus negative 10 square. Okay, just calculate it. Uh, normally, for this type of question, right, because if you are using EX calculator, sometimes they may uh, write it in exact form, right? That means in insert form, change it to decimal place and three significant figure. Okay, follow the instructions if right. Uh, yeah, if I'm sure, always just follow the instruction. Don't try to justify whatever working, okay? Uh, because we want to just follow as close as we can to the instructions that was given. Okay, question B. In triangle OMN, O is the origin, OM is equal to A, ON is equal to B. S is a point on MN such that MS to SN is 5 to 3. Okay, so this is the ratio. Normally in ratio, I want you all to write it in a circle like this. Okay, you all just write 5 parts to 3 parts. Put it as a circle so that you don't confuse with the value of the vector itself. So in terms of A and B, find the position vector of S. Position vector means I want to find what is OS. Give your answer in its simplest form. So we have to see over here, how can we get from O to S? Either here, here, or here, here. Okay, I will choose O, M, M, S. Okay, so that means I need to find what is M, S first. Okay, how can I find M, S? Okay, how can I find M, S? M, S, I can use 5 over 8 of this whole thing, right? Because these are 5 parts, these are 3 parts. Okay, can we use 5 over 8 of M, N? So let's go and find what is M, N first. Mn is Mo plus On, which is negative A plus B. Okay, negative A plus B. So Ms is equals to 5 over 8 Mn. So 5 over 8, negative A plus B. You can open up the bracket to become negative 5 over 8 A plus 5 over 8 B. Okay, everyone following through? And you hear MS? Okay, so we have MS already, which is negative 5 over 8A plus 5 over 8B. If you use NS, which is this part here, also can. Okay, not wrong. Right? How come your final answer will be the same anyway? Okay, so now let's put uh, OS uh, because position vector, the definition of position vector means O. You start from O. OM plus MS. A minus 5 over 8A plus. 5 over 8b. So this would come 3 over 8a plus 5 over 8b. Okay, good. 
Okay, if you are good, can you all just type a seven for question seven? It's a pretty easy factor question. We hope an exam come out like this. Uh. <laughs> right, let's go to question eight. On the axis, sketch the graph of y equals to four minus three x. Okay, so for graph in your mathematics, what type of graph did you all need to know? A okay, basic graph is straight line. Okay, just, just write down uh, all the graph that, that you all need to know. Number one, straight line. Straight line will fall under the equation y equals mx plus c. Second one, quadratic. y equals to ax squared plus bx plus c. Okay, it's either a happy face or sad face. Third one, cubic graph. y equals to ax cubed plus bx squared plus cx plus d. Okay, either like this or like this. This one is your ax cubed more than zero. AX cubed less than zero. Then the next one, inverse graph. Okay, you need to know your inverse graph also. Y equals to one over X. Okay, the quadrant, your graph will be like this. Okay, any more? Any more that you all can recall? Okay, for mathematics only. Huh? Okay, so now, Ah, okay, sorry. Three go graph, correct, and given. Okay, sine, cos, and tangent. So, this one, sine, cos, tangent. Okay, thanks, and given. So, like this, sine is S shaped like that. Cos, oops, like this. And then the last one, tangent. Okay, if unsure on any of these, please. Okay, like this, like this, and like this. Cubic and inverse uh, uh, exercises. Uh, actually, there's, there's not much on uh, inverse. Inverse, you just need to know which quadrant is it, like this basic one. Then if it's negative, means these are the two quadrants. Okay, but later, later, I already move on. Already. Later, our teacher will go back. Okay. A uh, cubic graph, you go to differentiation. Okay, differentiation and, and practice. Because you look at this specific question. Huh? Okay, this specific question here, later at the bottom. Okay, they will ask you on cubic graph. Right? Okay, now, let's look at this first equation first. Y equals to 4 minus 3x. This is straight line graph. Y equals mx plus c. Okay, so what can we interpret over here? There are two things that we can see. Y intercept is 4, gradient is equals to negative 3. Negative 3 means it is going down like that. Okay, so we need to see from the equation the uh, okay, how to draw already. Okay, so what can we what do we need to find to sketch it properly? We need to just have two points. X intercept, y intercept. Okay, I want you to find what's your x intercept. And find what is your y intercept. Okay, y intercept, we already have it. Y intercept, it is when your x equals to zero, y is equals to four. Okay, it's this value here itself. X intercept, it is when your y is equal to zero. Okay, so go and calculate for this part here. Zero equals to four minus three x. Three x equals to four. X will be equals to four over three. Okay, even though they just say sketch, they never ask us to label, but for this one, it's actually quite easy to label. So let's just label it. Okay, I don't know whether they will give marks for it. But for me, I will just label it because it's quite easy to, to find. Okay, so 4 over 3. Let's plot here. 4 over 3. And then 4. This one just roughly estimate. Okay, then join it like that. As long as it is going down and it passes through these two points, then you get the full marks. Okay, second one. On the axis, Sketch the graph of y equals to negative x squared. We need to know that this is a quadratic graph. Okay, quadratic graph is either a smiling face or a set face graph. Okay, we need to know also that if it's just x squared, it will be like this. Right in the middle, passing through 0, 0, and it touches one point only. Okay, so we say set face, right? Because this one is negative. Negative x squared means you get a set face graph. So you need to draw. Like that. That's all. These are no calculation. It doesn't intercept the x-axis. 
Yeah, like zero is on the x-axis. Right? Like that, right in the middle. Uh, I think it doesn't go through the, the x-axis. Right? I think that's what you meant. Uh, so it touches the x-axis at one point only. Y equals to negative x squared. Okay, that's all you all need to know. So I think the graph type of question normally won't be so complex like at math. Uh, you need to know the basic ones that I show you all here just now. Okay, this seven graph. Okay, let's go to question C. Find the coordinates of the turning points of the graph of y equals to 10 plus 9x squared minus 2x cubed. You must show all your working. Okay, turning points. How can I find turning points of a cubic graph? dy over dx. Very good. So we need to look at here first. This is a cubic graph. And you see here, my ax cube is negative. So the general shape of this should be something like this. It's smiling face, then set face. Roughly sketch it out, but even though it's not necessary, because there are some questions that they actually ask you to sketch it out, right? Uh, you all go and see all the parts here. So you need to know the shape. This is required for you all to know. dy over a uh, cubic graph where your ax cube is positive. Uh, this one is negative. So how to remember it? Enjoy now, suffer later. Remember the thing? Uh, suffer now, enjoy later, or enjoy now, suffer later. Okay. So to find turning point, we need to know this word. Turning point means dy over dx equals to zero. Okay, let's find what's the dy over dx first. You're going to multiply the power, power minus one. So 10 plus 10 will become zero. 9x squared will become 18x minus 6x squared. Yeah, this is turning point is also minimum and maximum point. Okay, so I got my dy over dx ready. So I'm going to sub this equals to zero. Okay, now dy over dx equals to zero. So zero equals to 18x minus 6x squared. I changed the position. 6x squared minus 18x equals to zero. I factorize it. 6x. Then here we'll get um, x minus 3 equals to zero. Okay, so this one, because you only got A and B when you, this quadratic equation, only A and B, so you have to factorize out the highest common factor. Then you will have two answers here. 6x equals to zero and x minus three equals to zero. x equals to zero and x is equals to three. Okay, two points over here. Okay, now when they say the word points, points is made up of x and y. Okay, point is made out of x and y. 3 minus x also is okay. Your outcome is still the same one. All right, no? 3 minus x equals to 0, x is also equal to 3. You see, no? uh, Lingue, uh, right. uh, your outcome is the same one. It's just that typically we will put the ax squared in front uh, for majority of you here. So we don't want to confuse the, the working. But if you do, if you factorize from here also, it's okay. Your outcome will be the same. Okay, now let's find the y point. So you got x equals to 0. What is your y? y is equal to 10 plus 9, 0 square minus 2, 0 cube. You'll get 10. x is equal to 3. y equals to 10 plus 9, 3 square minus 2, 3 cube. Calculate this, you get 37. So your two points will be 0, 10 and 3, 37. All right, so what can we make sense of this, right? Because this one is related to the next question. If you know the shape of the graph, actually, I can plot out one of these will be minimum, one of it will be maximum. Because the definition of turning point, I just know that it turns, but I don't know what is the nature of it. Okay, the next question is the nature. How do I know what's the nature? The first thing you can check is the position of the x. Which one is on the left side, which is on the right hand side? And we know the general shape for this negative cubic graph is smiling face and sad face. So I can say that here is actually. 0, 10. Here is 337. This is a max. This is a mean. Got it? Okay, but we cannot prove from like this. Uh, this is just a check. Honey. You still need to prove it using algebra. Okay, some sort of calculation. So what is the proof for this? Uh, determine whether each turning point is a maximum or a minimum. This is called finding the nature of turning point. Is dy over dx always equal to zero? It's always equal to zero for turning points. Turning points, why is it equal to zero? Because there's no gradient here. You see here. This one, dy over dx equals zero. 
dy over dx means gradient. Okay, you have to remember, uh, dy over dx equals to zero is only for turning point because dy over dx, the meaning is gradient. Gradient is zero at the turning point. Okay, nature, you are going to use d square y over dx square. Then you check whether it is less than zero or more than zero. If it's less than zero, you'll get a maximum point. If it's more than zero, it is minimum. Okay, let's do d square y over dx square. Put my dy over dx, 18 minus 6x square. So d square y over dx square will be equals to 18 minus 12x. Okay, so this is the equation only. Huh? There's nothing, there's no value over here first. Okay, this is just the general equation. Now what you're going to do is you need to substitute both the x value for these points here. Okay, so here, 0, 10. Okay, 0, 10, let's do the 0, 10 first. 0, 10, your d square y over dx square value. So you sub in the x value. 18 minus 12 times 0, which is equals to 18. 18 is more than 0. Okay, the answer is more than 0. So all you need to write is more than 0. Then you can say that 0, 10 is a minimum. Or you can just write 0, 10 is minimum. Or if you just write an arrow, we write minimum, also okay. Okay, this is just the sentence that you need to write. If one is minimum, normally the other one will be maximum. Okay, so we, but we still need to substitute it in. You substitute the x equals to 3. So 18 minus 12 times 3. Okay, uh, you will get negative 18. Okay, my share screen is laggy. Huh? Okay, uh, do you, all of you say, see, see it as laggy also? Is it laggy? Less than zero. Okay, I look over here, it should be okay. Okay, then here, 337, because less than zero is maximum. Okay, Sanjay, uh, if I put 18 more than zero and write a bracket that says minimum, is that okay? Yes, it's okay already. Yeah. Uh, but you need to at least write this equation over here. Uh, this, this point at the side here. Okay, so that we are signifying that 0, 10 is minimum. So if you write here more than 0, you just write bracket minimum, you get full marks also. Okay, then here you just write maximum, also full marks. Okay, any more question? Question 8. If okay with 8, this type 8. Which chapter is this? It's it. Chapter 7, graph. Graph, then differentiation. You go to the last part. Okay, so if you are asking about cubic, uh, cubic graph is normally here. Okay, on the differentiation. You go to chapter 7 in Digific, go until the last few videos. Okay, please write it down. Uh. Yeah, otherwise, later you all just ask in the group. Okay, someone will share, share the link. All right, let's go to question 9. Question 9. 9A, Jana and Kamal each invest $8,000. At the end of 12 years, they have 12800 They each have 12800 Jana invests in an account that pays simple interest at a rate of R% percent per year. Calculate the value of R. Okay, let's look at some of this information here first. Okay, they each invest 8000 So this is the principal. Okay, this is P. At the end of 12 years, this is T. They each have 12800 this is your A, okay? So uh, I don't know how you all memorize it, but this is normally, we normally memorize the, the general formula. So 100% uh, in your exam will come out with at least one simple interest or compound interest formula type of question, okay? Either in paper two or paper four, just be ready for it. So whatever, whatever it is, please go and memorize it. You also need to know the differences between simple interest and compound interest formula. There's a slight difference in terms of what the answer is giving you. Okay, so you look here, simple interest. They say this one simple interest, right? Can I straight away just put the formula inside? Okay, because simple interest formula is I equals to PRT over 100. Okay, this one, I mentioned it many, many times already. The formula over here, this is just interest only. Okay, interest only. Interest means how much you earn or how much you pay. Depends on which side you're at. Okay, uh, so if you, if you take, an, take a loan from the bank, then you have to pay interest. If you put your money in the bank, you will get interest. So it's either a profit or loss. These are business terms. Okay, so 
They wrote over here, at the end, they have 12,800. The okay, common mistake students will do, you all will go and put 12,800 here at the interest. Is 12,800 the interest? Okay. Ah, need to minus off, right? Okay, so be very careful uh, when you all deal with simple interest, compound interest. You need to go and find what's your I value first. Which is, you take the total minus the principal. Principal means your original. Eh? 8,000 is the original value. So 12,800 minus 8,000, which is 4,800. Okay, now we're going to put it into the formula, which is 4,800 equals to P, 8,000 times, okay, I don't know what's the R value, then times T over 100. Okay, go rearrange the entire thing, 4,800 times 100 over 8,000 times 12 equals R. Okay, go calculate this. Your R value is equals to 5%. Okay, we can just write here 5. Number two. Come on, invest in an account that pays compound interest at a rate of R percent per year. Calculate the value of R. None of this formula is given to y'all. Huh? Okay, so please go and memorize it. 100% will come out. Compound interest formula. A is equals to P bracket 1 plus R over 100 to the power of T. The A over here is principal plus interest. Okay, the principal amount plus the interest. So we feed in whatever that they give us. So this total amount is 12,800. Principal, the original amount is 8,000. One plus R over 100. The time frame is 12 years. They rearrange the entire thing. So 12,800 over 8,000. Then you will do Okay, wait, I do one step at a time so you all don't get confused. Okay, like this. Then you 12 root it. You gotta 12 root this, 1,000. You can you can start typing in the calculator all this value. In fact, you can just straight do it one step. So, okay, which is 1 plus R over 100. Okay, then I'm going to move the 1 to the left-hand side and I'm going to multiply the 100. So here will be 12 root. 1, 2, 8, 0, 0, over 8,000 minus 1 times 100 equals to R. You can do one step at a time. You don't have to do like me like that. Uh, but you can, in fact, straight away jump from here to here also can. If you are confident. Okay. Little thing to take note. If you are typing small parts of the calculator, Try not to keep rounding up the value. Okay, you need to use the exact value that is being shown on your calculator. Okay, so if I put the whole thing into calculator, minus one times 100, you'll get 3.99. 3.99441076.9, but we just round it to three significant figure. Okay, don't round it up to four, don't round it up to 3.9 or so. 3.99. Next one, question B. The population of a city is growing exponentially at a rate of 1.8% per year. The population now is 260,000. Okay, this is the separate question. Find the number of complete years from now when the population will be more first more than 300,000. Exponentially, the keyword here. Exponential, which formula do we use? Okay, when we see exponential, it's the same formula as compound interest. Okay, please remember this. No need to remember, memorize a separate formula. We will use the compound interest formula. Okay, which is A equals to P1 plus R over 100 to the power of T. Okay, what we are saying over here is that we want to find this first, this value where it's first more than 300,000. Okay, so I'm going to write down an equation which is 260,000, 1 plus 1 1.8 over 100 to the power of T. Okay, right now I don't have the T value, more than 300,000. Okay, I know a lot of you will get stuck with this part here. 
Yeah, I use log. Huh? Okay, yeah, I use log, but try not to. Okay, try not to, to use. I teach that method, but I teach you how to how to do the, the proper working. You still have to yeah, because I don't know how the marker will, will mark it. Yeah, we do try an error for this one, okay? Because I know some of you here are NMAP students, so you all will use log, but try not to because log is not inside the map syllabus. Okay, so what I'll do, if you read, you try, you simplify this entire thing first, bring the 260,000 to the right-hand side. So this one will become 1.018T more than 1 1.15384. Okay, proper way to do this, you're going to take your calculator, you're going to keep changing this T value. So we're going to do a trial and error method. You're going to keep changing this T value until you first see that this entire value is bigger than this 1.15384. Okay? All right? So I want you all to keep trying. Again, you'll type in the calculator. 1.018, power 2, power 3, power 4, power 5. You keep on testing it. Okay, sometimes you see the, the value if it's too small, uh, then you skip few numbers, make it a bit bigger. Okay, power nine, right? Okay, so you all see what is power eight? Power eight should give you one very close to it already. You all see the, the value? Power eight? 1.15384, right? Okay, 1.1534. Okay, then the next number, it will be bigger than 1.1584. Okay, so this is what you're going to do. You need to show your working. You cannot just write one value only. You need to show a before and after. So we're going to do this method called try and error method. You try and error. You just need to show, show the working. But you use the calculator. You don't have to write down every single one also. You don't need to write from uh, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5. Because otherwise, your working will be very long. You can write, but you waste time only. Okay, so now what you do, use the calculator already. You see uh, your calculator, 8 will be slightly smaller than this, very, very close already. Then nine is the first time that it gets bigger, right? Okay, everyone, you all see it on your calculator? You just need to play around with the calculator, okay, until you get the, the value. So this is how you show it. You are going to substitute t equals to eight first. So write down like that, 1.018 to the power of eight, which is equals to 1.1534, okay? Still smaller, right? Then t equals to nine, 1.018 to the power of 9, you get 1.1741. Okay, so you see, this is the first time that it is bigger than this value. The number before is smaller. It's very close, but it's smaller. So this is the answer. Okay, so you just need to write now like that. 9. You need to write a before and after, that's all. Okay. You all can learn this other method also, but what I would suggest is that in exam, you still do like this. That means you still need to do the try and error method. If some of you ask me, right, because if you, okay, if you go and use, uh, can I use the, the add math way? The answer you get correct. It's just that the steps, I don't know whether the marker understand or not. Because sometimes the marker never do add math, right? they only, they are only, they are just a marker, right? Uh, so you don't want them to go and figure out for you. How I get 1.1534? Just type in the calculator. 1.018 to the power of 8. You get the answer? 1.018 power 8. That's equal to you. Okay. The add math way is like this. Okay. You all can learn it uh, because this is in a way you can get it faster. Again, okay, the, the value. So from this step here, you're going to use log or lot. Okay. So uh, up, up to you are uh, log or lot. So you can put like this. You put a lot in front. 1.018 power t. This is how you put a log in front. Okay, I'll just put log. LG means log 10. Then you're going to bring this to here. Okay. The, why is it like this? It's just a formula. 1.018 equals to log 1.15384. Okay, you go and check this in the calculator. Log or log, okay, up to you, whichever button you want to use. 1.15384. Oops, wait, you got another log. So you just type log 1.018 divided by log 1.15384. Okay. Hold on, something is wrong. Uh, okay, wait, the other way around. Sorry, the other way around now. 
log 1.15384 divided log 1.018. Okay, so you'll see your answer here, you get 8.02, correct? Uh, so whatever value that you see here, you need to round up the value. Okay, it cannot be rounded down because this is more than. However, if whatever I'm saying is foreign to you, please don't learn, okay? Just do try and error uh, because this, this is still the, the proper working that, that you want to do because I know some of you, your, your teacher also taught you all this. Okay, not necessary to learn because... um. Uh, I normally see the mark scheme, they, they don't use this since you don't never learn log in your syllabus. How to get 1.15384? This divided by this. Okay, any more questions? Question 9. Okay, with 9, this type 9. Is it better to do try and error? You need to do try and error. Uh, not better or not. Do try and error. Okay. The other method is just that because we can straight away find the, the t value. Okay, but if you're not familiar with this, just, just don't use it. Okay, this one just don't use it. I'm just explaining because some of you have learned this before. Okay, let's go to question 10 right now. The table shows some value. Y equals to 2x cubed plus 6x squared minus 2.5. Complete the table. All right, so for what I like to do here, I like to use the CLC button on your calculator. Be careful, uh, when you're type in here, like x, this one you need to type in the negative also. Okay, so if you don't type in the negative, your point, your value will be a bit off. So here you get negative 2.5, negative 1.25, and 5.5. This is literally just type in a calculator, free three marks for you. Okay, how do you know whether your point wrong or not? Maybe when you when you plot it out, the graph doesn't, doesn't look very smooth. Uh, then maybe one of your point is a bit off already. You also should know what kind of graph that you should get for this type, this equation here. This is the cubic graph, right? X cubed. Positive X cubed, so I should get my graph set, then happy. Okay, so if my shape or the points doesn't form into this shape, uh, that means something is wrong with my calculation somewhere. So just go and recheck back. Okay, let's go and plot out the, the points. Point also, another thing, I want you all to put it in X. Uh, don't put it as a dot, because if you put it as a dot, very hard for you to, to see later on, like after you draw, draw, the, draw the graph. Okay, negative 3, Negative 2.5 is here. Negative 2.5. Neg uh, positive 3.75. Okay, jump up and do so far. 3.75 is about here. Minus 2, 5.5. Minus 1.5, 4.25. You see, this one got a lot in, in between. Turn, uh, so you draw the x a bit bigger. Okay, and please use pencil to, to draw also. Minus 1, positive 1.5, minus 0 0.5, minus 1.25. 0, negative 2.5, 0 0.5, negative 0 0.75, 1. 5.5. Okay, so you see the shape, the direct, okay, set face, happy face. Let's draw the graph. Okay, draw as smooth as you can, use pencil. Okay, like this. Will you get penalized for not drawing the graph perfectly? Uh? Depends how, how bad it is. Uh. <laughs> okay. But I think generally you should get a shape like this. Okay, how can how bad can it be? Okay, and okay, if you all can really cannot draw, right? You, you all know that this ruler where you can bend it, right? Uh, then uh last time last time uh, I actually go and buy that one, but I realized. Does not really help? Uh. Is it legal? Oh, good question. I don't know. Depends. It's a ruler. Right? <laughs> you know what, what was that? Uh? The, the soft ruler. The one where you can. Okay. Uh, the one that where you can bend. And you got, got it before? Yeah, rubber flexible ruler. Don't show the invigilator that can bend. <laughs> okay. Yeah. Yeah, don't, don't go show that. Just tell it it's a normal ruler. 
if your line not smooth enough, but has touched all the points, will we lose marks? Hey, what's stopping you all from drawing a nice graph? Unless you have like, I don't know, Parkinson's or something, right? Your hands, you're all okay, right? Your hands. All right, so I think you're drawing still very bad. Yeah, try, try. Uh, try, try your best. Cannot be that bad. Okay, I don't think it, it can be that bad. Your hands very shaky. Uh. Ayo, okay. You ask the invigilator, hold your hands uh, when, when you draw, draw the graph. Okay, let's go to question C. By drawing a suitable line on the graph, solve the equation 2x cubed plus 6x squared equals to 4.5. Okay, we will be going through, uh, I think next week, uh, based on my plan, I will be going through everything with you on the graph. Okay, because graph, if you all see this question, you've got a lot of marks. Paper eh? 4 normally will have a graph question. Okay, so how do we do this one? 2x cubed plus 6x squared equals to 4.5. A lot of you got stuck here, right? Don't know what to do, right? Okay, so this is what you need to do. Listen carefully, uh. every time graph question, always the same. Right? They will ask you to draw the graph already. Then one of the questions they will ask you, they say, draw a suitable line on the graph. Okay, what is this suitable line? So I want you all to observe the equation that is given to you in this question and also the equation that you drew just now. So what do you draw? 2x cubed plus 6x squared minus 2.5, right? Okay, so this is what you drew. What you need to do is, you are going to take this equation here. Your left-hand side of the equation needs to be equal over here. Okay? I want you all to, to take note of this. Huh? The left-hand side of this equation needs to be equal to the graph that is drawn. Okay. I'll teach you all two methods you all select, whichever method that, that you all want to follow. Huh? So how can I make my left-hand side of the equation equal to that? Okay, what is lacking right now? So you all write down this question here first, 2x cubed plus 6x squared equals to 4.5. Something is missing, right? Okay, I want to make left-hand side equals to equation of graph. Okay, ah, I got lag minus 2.5. Okay, very good vision. So can you all see that don't have the minus 2.5 over here, right? So what you need to do is you minus 2.5 both sides. That is. Uh, no, don't need to take from 4.5. You just minus 2.5. So it's either you minus something or you plus something. Okay, you just follow, follow this formula. So now you get 2x cubed plus 6x squared minus 2.5 equals to, okay, 4.5 minus 2.5 equals to 2. Okay, so after you get this ready, your right-hand side will always be an equation of a line. So it's either a value or mx plus c. So you look here. Now it's 2, right? The second part you're going to do is that you need to sketch out this graph. Okay, so take the right-hand side equation and write y is equal to 2. Okay, because this is y also, right? Uh, this is a y graph. So it's like y is equal to y. So I want us, we now have to sketch out y equals to 2. Okay, how does a y equals to 2 line looks like it is a horizontal line okay, normally not so nice not so easy they, they draw okay normally it's a slanted line this one y equals to 2 okay so at 2 i want you to draw a horizontal line here like that this is y equals to 2 and then what we're going to do okay your graph and my graph might be a little bit different so the points here might slide slightly different, but it should be close to each other. They will give you a range of values that is acceptable. So after you have done this already, you draw the line, then you find point of intersection. Point of intersection, okay, of the graph over here. So look at my three points. You look based on your own one. Okay, this one is, based on mine, is negative 2.6, 2.7. Okay, then here negative 1.1 1. 1. then here yeah i normally don't like something in the middle like okay so i will try to modify the graph sometimes so here is let's see how much is this 0 0.5 0 0.6 0 0.7 0 0.75 like that 0 0.75 or 0 0.8 okay your value should be close to it so plus minus i think 0 0.1 so based on mine, it's negative 
negative 1.1 and then 0 0.75. Okay, this question important. Normally graph question will come on. You make the left hand side equals to the equation of the graph that was drawn. Okay, clear? Clear how to do this? Any question? Okay, we will be doing a lot of this uh, because very high chance that this will come up for paper four. Okay, let's go to question D right now. The equation 2x cubed plus 6x squared minus 2.5 equals to k has exactly two solutions. Write down the two possible values of k. So what does this mean? We learn how to interpret from this equation. 2x cubed plus 6x squared minus 2.5 equals to k. Okay, they say it has two solutions. Two solutions means if we use the graph, means two points of intersection. Okay, question is two points of intersection with what? Okay, look at this equation. This is similar as the top one. What you need to see is that this equation on the left-hand side is the equation of the graph that was drawn. The equation of the graph that was drawn can be also considered as y, right? You see the equation that they give you is y equals to 2x cubed plus 6x squared minus 2.5, right? So can I replace this with y equals to k? Okay, y equals to k. k is a constant. So when, how can I get a graph where, okay, how can I get a graph where y is equals to a constant? How does a y equals to k graph looks like? Constant means like one, two, three, four, five, any just a value itself. It will be a horizontal line, right? Everyone understand here? Okay, if I take k as a constant, y equals to k will be a horizontal line. Okay, so what we are saying here is that when I draw a horizontal line on the graph here, okay, when I draw a horizontal line on the graph here, where exactly will I get two points of intersection? Okay, so this is what you do. Ah, so we say minimum and maximum point, very good. You can take your ruler, okay, you take your ruler, you put your ruler horizontally like this first, you're going to move up, down like that. Okay. You all see here, when the graph is over here, okay, what, what is this point? You look back into the points. We started at negative 2.5, and then at 0 also is 0, negative 2.5. This one got how many points of intersection? Two rights. Okay. Can we say that this part here, you get two solutions? Okay. Uh, this one, y equals to negative 2.5 you'll get two solutions. Okay, so we got one of the answer already. Okay, now, if I move up a little bit here, okay, this whole part here, how many solutions do you have? How many solutions do you all have here? So you see here, one, two, three solutions. This is not where, where I want, right? So you see this whole part here, oh, so it's three solutions, three solutions, three solutions, until reach your maximum point. Okay, so the maximum point is y equals to 5.5. Uh, so these two will give you two solutions. Answer is 2.5 and negative 2.5 and 5.5. This is what it means. Okay, number 10. If you are okay with number 10, can you just type 10? Any question, please type right down. Okay, let's move on to 11. Anderson, so creative. Huh? Do I have the marking scheme of this? Uh, official, I don't have. Only got, got my. Only got my. Okay. 11. Fx equals to 1 over x, gx, 3x minus 5, hx equals to 2 to the power of x. Okay, this is on function. Function, you all need to know three things. Number one, how does a function work? Number two, composite function. Number three, inverse function. Okay, three things. So, gf2, this is a composite function. You find what is f2 first. Okay, gf2, here is 1 over 2. Okay, this, you do this part here first. You always start from the right-hand side. Now, g1 over 2 is 3, 1 over 2, minus 5. 
you're going to calculate this, you'll get negative 3.5. Okay, or if you want to write it as um, improper fraction, also doesn't matter. You want to change to 0 0.5, uh, also can, also can. Okay, second one, G inverse X. So G inverse X, we will always start with this statement here. Let Y equals G inverse X. G Y is equals to X. 3y minus 5 is equal to x. We want to make y as a subject. So y is equal to x plus 5 over 3. Okay, x plus 5 over 3 is your g inverse x. Fine. In its simplest form, g bracket x minus 2. So I'm going to replace all the x with x minus 2 right now. 3 bracket x minus 2 minus 5. 3x minus 6 minus 5. 3x minus 11. Okay, got it, Nila. All the best for your exam. Later you watch back, huh? This, uh, I'll send this in a group. Okay, those who have an exam, you all got an exam tomorrow, need to study. Please focus on your exam. You all can watch back the, the recording later. Okay, question C. Find the value of x when fgx equals to 0 0.1. Okay, we need to find what's fgx first. What is fgx? F bracket. 3x minus 5. Okay, let's find what's fgx first. Huh? Then f, f is 1 over x. So this is 1 over 3x minus 5. Okay, this is your fgx. So 1 over 3x minus 5 equals to 0 0.1. Okay, let's go and solve for this. Multiply this up. 0 0.1, 3x minus 5 you get 0.3x minus 0 0.5. One. Design, move the minus 0 0.5 to the left-hand side. 0.3x. X is 1.5 over 0.3. Okay, your final answer. X is equal to 5. Okay, last one. Hx equals to g, uh, Hx minus g7 equals to 0. Okay, what's Hx? Okay, we follow 2 to the power x. Gx is 3x minus 5. So 3 times 7 minus 5. Okay, let's find what's g7 first. g7 equals to 3 times 7 minus 5, which is equals to 16. Okay, now we put into the equation, the question. 2 to the power x. Minus 16 equals to 0. Oh, okay. How do we solve this? 2 to the power x minus 16. So when you want to solve unknown at your level, your math level, you put both sides one value each, you change it to the same base. Okay, so move the 16 to the right hand side first. Then change 16 to 2 to the power of something. Okay, so 2 to the power of what is 16? 2 to the power of 4. Okay, so you get here x is equals to 4. Hmm, 2 to the power of 4. Okay, 11, I think most of you are okay, right? Okay, if you're okay, 11, type 11 in the chat. Okay, 12 is a question that a lot of you got stuck also, right? Okay, is it 12B? I think 12B, right? Is the one. Okay, let's see 12, question 12. The diagram shows a circle of radius 12cm with a sector removed. Calculate the perimeter of the remaining shaded shape. Definition of perimeter means the length of the outside here. Okay, so this one looks like a Pac-Man, right? So you need to find the length of this yellow highlighted. Okay, first thing, we need to find this part here first. This is the radius, so 12 and 12. How do I find the outside part here? I need to find the angle here first. Okay, so the angle is 360 degrees minus 50 degrees. 310 degrees. Then, the length of arc, what's the formula for length of arc? Theta over 360 times 2 pi r. Okay, you need to memorize this formula. Arc means part of the circumference. So theta is 310 over 360 times 2 pi 
12. Okay, for me, normally in the middle of the equation, I write, I try to write it in exact form first. Okay, whatever the calculator shows you, because now your 5 0 ex, you will normally leave it in terms of pi, right? You just follow first. Um, not wrong, yeah, not wrong to write it in decimal, but I prefer just writing it like this first. So that you don't lose the accuracy of it. Okay, now perimeter means you need to take two radius plus 62 over 3 pi. Okay, when you're due here, then only you round it up to three significant figures. 12 plus 12 plus 62 over 3, 88.9. Always 3 SF to be safe. Okay, one last final one. Question B. The diagram in part A shows the top of a cylindrical kick with a slice removed. The volume of kick that remains is 3510 cm3. Okay, this is volume of kick that remains. So you look at this kick, what they are saying right now is that this is a 3D shape. Okay, there is a base to it. Okay, imagine this is a kick right now, and you're looking from on top. They want you to calculate the height of the kick. Okay, so this is in a way a prism, prism a calculation of volume of prism formula. Okay, what is prism? You got a cross sectional area multiplied by the height. Okay, so now you need to find what is this cross sectional area first. So you find the area of this sector first, which is your cross sectional area. So area of sector, which is theta over 360 times pi r squared. Theta is 310 over 360 times pi 12 squared. You'll get 1, 2, 4 pi. Is it not a cylinder? A cylinder is circle shape. This is a cylinder. Cylinder is a type of prism also. Okay, the, the general term is called a prism. Uh, so your cross-sectional area can be anything. I can put your face there, then got a length or height, we also call it a prism. Okay, now, the volume of the prism is what? Or the volume of the cake? Volume is 1, 2, 4, uh, or you can write like that first, uh, cross-sectional area, which is the area of the sector, multiplied by height. Okay, so you need to know this formula first, which is prism. In other words, it's actually prism. Your cross-sectional area was that 1, 2, 4 pi. So 1, 2, 4 pi height is equals to 3, 5, 1, 0, okay? which is the value that they give you. Rearrange this, 3, 5, 1, 0 over 1, 2, 4 pi. Okay, calculate this. Run it up to three significant figure. You will get 9.01. If you are good, you'll just type a 12 in the chat for question 12. Okay, I'll send the answers by working to y'all in the group. If y'all got anything, uh, right after this, y'all can write down all your questions and I will discuss with y'all. Okay, so this is the end of February March 2024, paper 4-2.